Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today I'd like to talk to you guys about army composition and how to best organize your armed forces in Hearts of Iron 4. And I'm just going to use a German playthrough that I did. As an example, I just completed Operation Barbarossa here and split Russia into two. And I was able to accomplish this uh, with this army right here. I, as you can see, I have five armies and five generals and one field marshal. And uh, just as an example, to complete Operation Barbarossa, I did not max out uh, the armies in, in terms of divisions. Instead, I had three 24 division armies and a 15 division army and a 16 division army. So it's not necessarily the best to just pump out as many divisions as possible. And I'm going to go into the reasons why right now. Uh, so one of my viewers had questions about this, and that's why I'm doing this video for you. But uh, basically, the things that you want to plan for whenever you're playing Hearts of Iron 4 is uh, to keep your divisions filled up with equipment. And you see you have the green bar and the beige bar right here next to every division. And uh, this is one of the armies. It has Guderian as the general. And we have an armored spearhead here that I follow up with cavalry. And basically the green bar is organization, but the beige bar is equipment. And you want to keep these as full as possible. Because as you can see here, this cavalry division here, its current fighting strength is 86%. So if you do not have the beige bar filled with equipment, then you're going to suffer penalties. And it looks like we're missing uh, a few artillery pieces here and some infantry equipment. So before you do any type of uh, invasion or you start any type of war, you want to make sure that you have enough equipment in your stockpile under the logistics tab here to keep your beige um, bars full in your divisions. So what you need to plan for is in terms of, say, take this example, in term, when we're going to invade uh, the Soviet Union as Germany, uh, we already talked about the army composition. I like to have a stockpile of at least like 30,000 uh, infantry equipment and just to make sure that um, we have enough equipment in the divisions. Infantry equipment is going to be the most important uh, piece of equipment that you need to gauge and you need to to have enough to not only fight um, and win the battles but also enough for the occupation because mainly what you're going to be using uh, is infantry equipment to occupy uh, the territories that you conquer and then this is the occupied territories tab and you can actually uh, drill down further and see how much equipment you're losing. So let's head into here. So it looks like you're losing manpower and um, the mainstay of the equipment that we're losing is infantry equipment. So it's very important in terms of quelling um, resistance as well. So that's why it's so important to have uh, your stockpile at a certain level before you start a particular invasion. The other trick I like to use when we're setting up um, the divisions and setting up uh, our equipment and looking at our stockpile is I like to produce the older style infantry equipment because it actually, the production cost is a little less. For Germany, the Gewehr 98 is 0 0.07 production cost less than the infantry equipment one. And although that seems like it's a small amount, um, it will give you a few hundred more guns, say, and that will allow you to um, keep your beige bars um, maxed out during the battle. So even if there is a difference in production of just a few hundred, I'd rather have a rifle in the hand 
of one of my uh, troops than not. And that way I don't suffer penalties. Uh, it's more important to me to not suffer the penalties than it is to have an inferior weapon. So that's kind of the concept in terms of setting up your, your armies for an invasion. Another trick that you can see here is actually manipulating the division templates. A good rule of thumb is that a 10, 12, or 14 width is kind of acceptable, and 18 and 20 width work as well. Um, anything out of that area uh, is kind of a little dangerous because the multiples don't fit into 80 as well. Uh, the other thing is that these this template, this cavalry template that I'm using, does not require a lot of infantry equipment, as opposed to, say, this mobile infantry equipment, this mobile infantry division. And I actually tailor uh, my different division templates for different jobs. So as you can see, here's my MP division template, and it's so large because they're actually not going to use combat width. And it actually saves... Uh, support equipment um, and I'll do another video on that later but you can see here I made an anti-tank division template by just putting in support anti-air and that gives the division piercing and I can literally just go through and use uh, this tab right here and change the divisions to whatever template that I need on the fly. So if I go to my logistics tabs and see that I'm running out of anti-air, I can change more of my divisions into just a basic infantry template without the anti-air. And that way we can make sure that their fighting strength is maxed out and optimized. And so... Other than that, I think that's all that I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, don't spam out divisions. Take a look at your division with how much equipment your different, different divisions need and pretty much tailor your division templates to the equipment that you have on hand and make sure turn one, you are microwing what you're producing so that it meets the needs of whatever particular invasion that you're planning for. Um, it all starts off with the production screen and then gets um, microed in uh, the, the division template screen here. And also uh, it gets altered in how many divisions you have in your armies. Uh, so if you have any questions, please leave comments down below. If you enjoy this video and you enjoy this type of content, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.